Give everybody a minute to come to order. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the April 27th, 2022 Board of Supervisors meeting of Newtown Township. And as we call the meeting to order tonight, I would, I would note that it's a common practice that we observe a moment of silence. As we do that this evening, why don't we just uh, each take a couple of deep breaths and relax our minds and bodies and be prepared to, so we're prepared for the evening ahead. Thank you. Would you join the board in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Manager, do we have uh, any changes to the agenda? It's one change, Mr. Chairman. Item 12A1 under the engineer's report. It's been removed as it is no longer necessary. Okay, thank you. Any special actions? There are none. Seeing none, we'll move right to our first round of public comment. <clears throat> I would um, just remind those in attendance that Public comment is for issues that are not on the agenda. When we come to issues that we're voting on on the agenda, we'll have uh, public comment at that time about that particular issue. So if anyone would uh, care to share with any public comment this evening, please come to the podium and state your name and your municipality or your... Uh, hello, my name is uh, Bradley Cooper. I live in uh, Newton Granite for Aspen Court. And I just had a general question. Um, I know it brings up very bad memories thinking about the hurricanes that happened the past couple of years. But I was just wondering, I don't know if it's part of Northampton Township's uh, jurisdiction or if it's Newtown Township, but I was just seeing if anybody had any idea when Worthington Mill Road, uh, one single lane bridge was going to get fixed or adjusted or whatever. I do not. I just know that it's going to be a while. I don't know if it's months or years. Uh, have, have we? It's not. It's not Newtown. It is. It is Wrightstown. Okay, it I might, didn't know. Maybe Northampton. That's, that's probably Northampton there. Okay, I didn't know which side it fell on or not, because I know the zoning and the borders are pretty close right. to each other. So. It, it, it is pretty close in that area. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We can find out and let you know. Any other public comment? Please. So we all can hear you. And is the microphone on? There's Push a button. Talk. Okay. There you go. Now it's good. Uh, this is for things that aren't going to be on the agenda, or is that what you said? Right. And there's another round of public comment at the end. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I just have people that are going to comment, but they're not here yet. So I just okay. wanted to make sure I wasn't we'll, missing we'll fit, we'll fit them in at the end, I promise. Thank you. Any others? Okay, and if I find my agenda, I believe that brings us to uh, reports of boards and commissions. Minor approvals, any minor approvals? No. So, reports of boards and commissions, and we have the planning commission report. Ms. Driscoll, welcome. Good evening, Peggy Driscoll, Chair of the Newtown Township Planning Commission, to give you a report on our April 15th meeting. Uh, first item on our agenda was a PRD variance for Keith and Beth Torek at 183 Greenbrier Lane. The applicants are seeking a PRD variance for relief of a rear yard setback of 24.8 feet, where 32.7 feet is the minimum, to convert an existing 357 square foot patio to an addition to their home as a four season room. The Planning Commission recommended that the Board of Supervisors approve this PRD variance subject to conditions including compliance with the Remington and Vernick letter dated March 23rd. Next, we had three zoning hearing board applications. The first was Brian Kemp, Kemp 249 Frost Lane. 
The applicant is seeking a variance for relief of the impervious surface to permit 21% where 12 is the maximum and 16 is the current ratio to install a swimming pool. The Planning Commission recommended that the Board of Supervisors support this application subject to the condition that the stormwater mitigation is undertaken to mitigate any additional runoff. Next, we had Karen and Vince Clementi at 9 Hillview Drive. The applicant is seeking relief of impervious of 6,790 6, 6, square feet, where 6,000 square feet is the minimum, and rear yard setback of 42 feet, where 50 feet is required for a patio shed, driveway expansion, and walkways. The Planning Commission recommended that the Board of Supervisors support this application. Next, we had Volta Charging LLC at 48 West Road. The applicant wishes to install two electric vehicle charging stations in the Newtown Shopping Center. Relief is needed to permit the use, relief from our signage ordinance for size, height, illumination, and for electric message centers, which are prohibited. The charge is free as the applicant's business is selling electronic advertising on the stations. As the Joint Zoning Council is considering drafting a new ordinance to address electric vehicle charging stations, we have recommended that the applicant meet and make a presentation to the jointure. Next, we had our JM Zio wireless ordinance. Uh, Ms. Fountain, our planner, prepared an excellent presentation of this ordinance, and we will continue our discussion at our next meeting. Next, we had two conditional uses, one for Forever Young, 2123 South Eagle Road. The applicants seek approval for a medical use, D2, a med spa in the PC Plan Commercial Zoning District. The commission recommended that the Board of Supervisors approve this application, subject to compliance with the review letter of CKS engineers dated March 30th. And then we had the Borscht Belt Delicatessen, Applicants are seeking approval for an eating place use, E5 and E6, drive-through takeout. There will be no drive-through window. The Planning Commission recommended that the board approve this application subject to compliance with the CKS review letter dated March 30th. And that was all we had. Any questions? Thank I'll you. try to answer. I believe there's one question, and I have one too, but you may go ahead. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Yes, so regarding the Volta charging, uh, you don't make a recommendation because I think uh, they said they would uh, consider tabling their application, basically. But I see it's still on the agenda for the uh, zoning hearing board. Uh, I did talk to Mr. Poganowski uh, from the Joint Zoning Council about having them make a presentation before the council and he said that I don't know if that is appropriate. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, they've never done that before where they had an applicant come in. But we're going to have it on the agenda for them to see if we can get them to come to the Joint Zoning Council. And just so that we can learn a little bit more about these uh, charging stations for our help to help us write the ordinance that we need. There's, many variations on these charging stations and regarding signage, placement, and so on. So I guess it would be appropriate, since they're still on the zoning hearing board agenda, later in the, uh, on the agenda we will have a vote on whether we oppose this or not? We'll have a, a, we'll have a consensus of whether we want to address any of these issues. Mr. Solicitor, you can correct me if I'm that, wrong. That's correct, Mr. Chairman. So okay. we, we will be looking at it again. All right, thank you. That's my... Well, we, we have had the charging stations come in, but these are um, electronic message centers. They do have digital signage. Uh, the other ones do not. They're just charging stations. So uh, the electronic message centers are prohibited within the jointure. So uh, I, I would ask maybe the solicitor, where, where do we go from here? Well, as noted, the, the issue will be under my report about whether the board wishes to take a position on this specific application, which is scheduled to be heard on <clears throat> May 5th, if they don't request a, a continuance. So you can deal with this issue at that time, if, if you choose. 
Um, the overall issue is obviously being considered by the Joint Municipal uh, Zoning Account, JZC. Um, and uh, an ordinance is going to have to be drafted. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea to have somebody come in, especially with new technology, and, and advise the Joint Zoning Council, which is sort of everybody gathering it at once, to say, you know, here are some of the things we'd like to see, here are some of our concerns, you know, can we work together on this, especially if it's the wave of the future. Obviously, the Joint Zoning Council municipalities will be making the ultimate decision on the terms of an ordinance, but, um, you know, I don't think it's a bad idea to have them come in. I think you're correct because they did mention they do this, they've done this in a number of different communities, and they've had different issues in different communities, and we can learn uh, how, how they work with other communities and uh, incorporate that into maybe our ordinance to anticipate other issues that we might have with charging stations. So I, I would be in favor of having them come before the Joint Zoning Council myself. I, I think it's a good idea because the, uh, the electronic message centers um, are not permitted by right or conditional use within the jointure. So we, we're definitely going to need some direction on this. And I, I assume the other townships will have to put input in on it too. And we will be talking about it. I, I plan to talk about it some more when we come okay. to that issue in the solicitor's report. And the only other thing that I wanted to say was I was going to ask about whether you indeed make, made a recommendation or not, so that's taken care of. The only other thing I wanted to say was it's kind of a preview of coming attractions because just about everything you hit we're going to talk about address later on this evening. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. And thank the commission. Brings us to the board. Um, board board member comments. I have just I, I have four comments. They're all very 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 brief. Um, let me just find my agenda. Uh, the the first one is that uh, to congratulate the township, congratulate the uh, uh, Liana for her, her hard work on on a grant that we received. Uh, from PennDOT is the multimodal grant that is uh, for $873,000. It's, uh, if, I'm, if I'm not wrong, it's going to be used to uh, update our connections in the business commons, to connect some of the sidewalks in the business commons, and then also to uh, finish out some trail extensions so that they match up with the next, next trail better. So that'll be very well, very well used, and we thank you for that. I attended, um, on Monday night, I attended the Newtown Fire Association meeting. I just wanted to mention that uh, they are still uh, receiving uh, thank yous from, especially from borough residents, but others as well, for their performance uh, on the fire at State Street a few, few weeks ago, a month, or it was a month ago now. Uh, not only the Newtown Fire Association, but the uh, Newtown Emergency Services Department uh, on off-duty hours came out and helped fight that fire and knock it down real quick so it didn't spread. Um, the next meeting I attended last night, we had a finance committee meeting right here in this room. Uh, we uh, have a, a, someone who wants to be a new member of the committee. As, as it stands, there are only two members on the on the committee, it's, so it's not an official meeting or anything. So uh, we need to have at least five five members of that committee. Um, so we we did meet. We talked about uh, the treasurers, the monthly treasurers reports that we get, and and how to read those, uh, and, and that a lot of good information in there. So um, we're happy that we got a, a, a possible new member that will get the bio together and. Uh, give it to everybody for, by, by, by the next meeting so we can make a uh, decision. Um, then the last item I had was a really fun one, and it has uh, um, some kudos to the Recreation Department. I attended the Touch a Truck event uh, on April 14th, 
and uh, it, it was very well attended. And I caught the very end, uh, but there were still a lot of young families there, and they were really enjoying themselves. And uh, just thank you to the recreation department. And it turns out that the Veterans Park is a is a nice venue for that. And I'm sorry I missed the helicopter landing and taking off. That's all I got. Anyone, uh, Mr. Mack? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I didn't attend any fun meetings, but um, uh, I did attend the uh, Economic Development Committee meeting on April 19th. There was a special guest from uh, PICO, uh, Ted Dorland, who's the external affair managers, and he talked about the electronic uh, charging stations and what PennDOT, uh, what, um, I'm sorry, PICO has in terms of incentives uh, to get those installed, uh, set up uh, grants and such. And he mentioned, for example, Middletown recently received $215,000 grant to install three electronic, uh, electronic, electric vehicle charging stations, fast chargers. Those fast chargers can charge your car 80% within 10 to 20 minutes. And by the way, that's what I think Volta was looking at, something like that. He also talked about solar power and uh, the incentives that PICO offers for getting uh, solar panels. Uh, Matt Peters, the chair of the Economic Development Committee, asked about installing solar panels in parking lots and other open spaces. Uh, you'd have to get the details from the minutes of that meeting, I guess. Uh, I also attended the Human Relations Commission meeting on April 20th, and there was a discussion there about uh, a mural that we might be able to do somewhere in Newtown that uh, has a theme of equality uh, and um, uh, equity and so on, and because that came up also with the K-12 K diversity. They're very interested in what's going on in the schools regarding uh, some anti-diversity actions. Uh, I did mention that um, Mr. Calabro has asked uh, twice that uh, Council Rock have a new uh, principal who might be uh, a person of color, and um, uh, Mr. Antoine, who's the chair, is also a diversity officer at uh, Bucks County Community College, and he described what is necessary if you want to have uh, uh, that kind of appointment, you need to have a pool of applicants, you need to make sure the pool of applicants is wide enough, otherwise you can, you're not going to end up with uh, diversity, so that was his recommendation. The other uh, uh, thing he noted was uh, they wanted to do something uh, to celebrate uh, June ter ter Juneteenth, which is celebrated on uh, June 19th, and uh, the suggestion was made that perhaps a presentation be before the Board of Supervisors that could be broadcast uh, on cable might be something to consider. We can consider that. And I just wanted to mention that tomorrow I'll be going to the um, Bucks County Tax Collection Committee. Uh, this is where we get a uh, idea from the uh, Keystone Collection Agency, which collects our earned income tax. And they're going to give a report on that. Maybe I'll learn something. Um, they did in January meet. I wasn't there, but they said uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, there were warnings of a shortfall in EIT, but Bucks County com uh, communities did not experience shortfalls. There was an increase of 11.5% in 2021, and school districts EIT increased between 8.7% and 18.1% in 2021. Uh, and that's my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mack. Ms. Snyder? I just would like to, I didn't attend any fun meetings either, but Parks and Recreation had a great Arbor Day at Roberts Ridge Park where they planted two trees. Uh, they helped to plant two trees. And uh, I'm sorry I couldn't be there, but that was very well done. Uh, on Monday, May 9th, 
the Environmental Advisory Committee will be meeting again, and we will be talking about alternative energy sources, such as solar and everything that you said. And maybe we can bring something to our township and this township complex that uh, uses different types of energy sources. So that's what we're working on. That's all. And the tree planting was in uh, conjunction with Earth Day, right? Yes. Yeah. Arbor Day. Arbor Day, Earth Day. Yep. Mr. Calabro, anything? Yeah, uh, just one quick, uh, quick uh, mention. Um, well, I'd like to thank Mr. Mack for the mention about the uh, diversity. Uh, although I would love to see a uh, diverse uh, woman of color for principal, I was mentioned as superintending. So, well, no, that's okay. But, uh, we'll, we'll do it all. <laughs> but that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Calabro. Mr. Davis? I don't have anything. Thank you. No? We didn't have a, uh, is there a, an activity report for the rec department? Yes, sorry. <laughs> Not used to it. Uh, some things to mention for parks and recreation. Uh, register today for the following upcoming programs. Chakras, Super Soccer Stars, and Saturday Art Workshops. The current summer newsletter should have arrived in your mailboxes. All summer programs and camps are listed online as well. Half-day playground camp director, age 21 or above, is needed. Please visit NewtownFund.com for an application. And finally, discount movie tickets are available to purchase at the Parks and Rec office. Sesame Place tickets are available for pre-order at a discounted price of $17. Other offerings will be announced within the next few weeks. Okay, before, before I go on, I would want to, I would like to welcome all those who might be on YouTube with us this evening. Uh, two, two weeks ago, we had uh, had some technical difficulties, but tonight it's rolling. And uh, if, if there are any pu public comments for any of the issues coming forward, uh, you can make comments uh, and address them to comments at, at newtownpa.gov. And we will try to capture them and read them. Okay. Uh, next agenda item is uh, public hearings. And Mr. Solicitor, will you take Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The uh, first public hearing this evening is the uh, application for conditional use by the Borscht Belt Delicatessen. The property is located at 2124 South Eagle Road. It is a request for conditional use to operate a use E5 eating place and use E6 uh, drive-in, uh, which generally means uh, take-out uh, restaurant in the uh, southern portion of the village uh, at Newtown, which is not Bricksmore, um, for everyone's uh, information. <clears throat> um, before we get started, I want to mark the application uh, as Exhibit T1. I want to mark the proof of publication of notice of this evening's hearing as Exhibit T2. Uh, that appeared on April 10th and April 17th in the advance of Bucks County. Uh, exhibit T3 will be the uh, proof of posting of notice of the hearing at the property. Uh, and Exhibit T4 will be CKS Engineers Review Letter dated March 30th, 2022. Uh, at this time, um, it would be appropriate to um, have the applicant, uh, applicants, looks like, uh, team, uh, introduce themselves. Uh, and um, before anybody starts to testify, we need to swear in uh, everybody. Is there an attorney? Um, no? Okay. Um, we're going to have to swear in anybody who's going to be testifying ought to be sworn in by our court reporter. Okay, as you each speak, please uh, obviously identify yourself uh, for the record. Uh, if you have a difficult last name, please spell it. Um, and uh, so the, our court reporter can get that down, and the board can know exactly who you are. And the um, floor is yours. Okay, 
I'll start, I'll introduce myself, I'll introduce the group, and then if you have questions of any of us, we can go from there. My name is Steve Samuel. I'm one of the partners um, in the Borscht Belt Deli. Uh, the, to my left is Mike Dalowitz, uh, who's another one of the partners. Uh, we have Scott Hendrickson behind him, and Nick Liberato. So these are the four partners in the group. This is Ralph Fay. Uh, he's our architect and has been working with us diligently to get these plans uh, put together. Okay, uh, tell us what you want to do and uh, tell us about your proposed operation. Okay, uh, so this is, a, I think, a very simple application. Uh, we intend to put in uh, a deli restaurant uh, in the space that was uh, previously a restaurant and before that it was a restaurant. We don't intend to increase the footprint uh, by any size. We're not putting in any uh, controversial equipment. Uh, this really is your classic uh, Jewish deli serving um, classic Jewish deli foods. Uh, we will be shipping in uh, foods from various vendors uh, in and around the New York City area. Uh, some of the stuff is made on premises as well. Uh, and we intend to be open seven days a week. Uh, the hours currently uh, contemplated are 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, we might cut that short. We're not really sure. We'll see what the demand is. Uh, but. I think it's a relatively simple apples for apples application uh, to the extent uh, any of the board members have any questions at all. Uh, one of us should be able to answer it and with regard to the plans themselves, certainly uh, Mr. Fay should be able to answer that as well. Okay, um, are there any board questions for the applicant? I have two. Certainly. Um, let me give the one I can remember first. <laughs> <laughs> the outdoor seating. I saw a, a note on one of the plans, or one of the, uh, I'm looking for it in, on the CKS lab, but I saw a note somewhere in here that they, they wanted to see on the drawings that the tables would not impede the sidewalk. That's correct. Right now on the drawings we have uh, 12 seats. I believe that there might be 16 seats, but I'm not sure. Uh, and we will be careful to not uh, impede uh, ingress or egress, you know, of the facility. Additionally, um, there is an existing planter that's on there, which goes into the middle of the sidewalk. The landlord has agreed for us to expand the footprint of the area for, you know, increased traffic for ingre ingress and egress. So that planter will become walkway at that point um, to increase the uh, walkway. And this may be my second question, maybe the planning commission person in, inside of me that I used to be. But uh, often they ask about the number of employees and the hours, and you're, you're confident you have on your application what you need. So you won't need any more and have to come back, for, back to us for anything. I believe that's correct, yes. Okay. Yes. Any other board questions for the applicant? Yeah. I'm just uh, curious. So you plan to close at seven, so it's not really it's like early bird crowd. Well, it's really more lunch and uh, breakfast and lunch, uh, and then the question will become: Does it make sense to stay open for some sort of dinner servings? But yeah, the um, uh, we have an existing um, uh, deli in Stockton, New Jersey. Um, currently, those hours are eight to three. Um, looking at you know some of the other locations in Newtown. Uh, for bagels and deli and lunch. Uh, there's in our social media uh, cues that people that have been following us and uh, knowing we're coming, a lot of them have been asking for uh, some of those roast chicken or brisket dinners, some things either to go or potentially to come in for an early dinner. Um, we're kind of still filling that out, but right now, um, you know, we'd like to serve the community and how, how they, you know, how they'd like to be a little bit more creative than we are in our own uh, restaurant now to be able to um, extend service a little bit more than three o'clock and get some of that early dinner crap. Thank you. I had a question. Uh, it's just curiosity. I, you must have some kind of takeout service plan. Uh, yes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> we have we we have both on uh, you know different apps uh, as well as um, you know takeout. Um, take out uh, throughout uh, as well as some seated areas. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah, I just have one uh, suggestion. 
And I know we've been talking about hours of operation, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, you could always shorten your hours without ever having to come back to us. But what I always say to an applicant is that, for instance, say you figure you want to open up at 6.30. You want to catch the early breakfast. Well, if it's not in, these, it's not in here, you're going to have to come back here and reapply. So I, I don't know if you want to reconsider your hours. Like I said, shortening them is no problem. But if you want to extend them, yeah, well, that's I think that's good. I think now. we should probably we'll move it earlier then and bump it out later and uh, how early and maybe six o'clock. Yeah, six a.m. just in case. And, and you don't have to open at six a.m. Right. Yeah, but, but I mean, you have that. Do you want to go six to eight just in case? Yeah, six, to nine. Nine. six to nine. Six to nine just in case. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Solicitor, did you catch that? I certainly did, Mr. Calabro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for the suggestion. Okay, any other questions for the applicants? Um, any other testimony? Um, I'd like to ask for public comment at this time. Anybody in the room uh, or on uh, streaming uh, service uh, who wishes to make a public comment on this matter, please come up to the microphone or submit your uh, question electronically. I don't see anybody in the room. I did want to pause for uh, a little bit to see if we get any uh, emails from online viewers. Ms. McGovern is shaking her head no. So, uh, okay, if, if we do get it, feel free to interrupt. But um, seeing no public comment um, and seeing no additional board comment. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Solicitor, I, I, may, I may have another ah, certainly comment Mr. Um, Your outside seating, I know this is the old, uh, was it called, it was called Middle called. Eastern? It was, it was called Indian, called. and then before then it was a right. Thai. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thai and from what I remember, it has a Side. very large sidewalk. Side yes. Walk. And I guess that's where you're going to put your tables. Oh, exactly. Now, next to that is, is it the Orange Theory? Beer no, the, there's the a, beer. it's a uh, Newtown beer. beer. Okay. On that side. I was going to say, if it was Orange Theory, I'm sure maybe you could work something out to put some more tables. But uh, we don't want people sitting out there drinking beer. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no, it's a great sidewalk for, for tables because it, it is one of those ones that's pretty deep, so. That's all I have. I'm sorry. No, thank you, Mr. Calabro. Um, any other board comments? I hear you're bringing in the good bagels, right? Uh, okay. We, we got the yes of bagels, yes. <laughs> so they're coming straight from hot bagels in Margate? We, is we that got, correct? We, we have uh, uh, yes of bagel, which by some is considered the uh, top uh, New York City bagel come fresh daily over here. Yes, you need the New York City water for great bagels. That, that's, that's why we're importing. We're that's importing. the key ingredient. <laughs> Okay, any other comments? Uh, would the board um, uh, be okay if I framed a motion for its consideration? Yes, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> if the board is of a mind, it would be a motion to grant the application of uh, Mike Dalowitz uh, for the business to be known as the Borscht Belt Deli um, as a use E5 and E6 eating place and eating place drive-in restaurant, respectively. The property is located at 2124 South Eagle Road in the village at Newtown South Shopping Center. The property is zoned PC, Planned Commercial Zoning District. Approval is granted conditioned on the applicant's compliance with the following conditions. First, the applicant shall comply with the CKS Engineers Review Letter dated March 30th, 2022. Second, the hours of operation shall be from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. seven days a week. Three, there will be 10 employees on each of three shifts and a maximum of 30 employees overall. Four, the proposed use will not disseminate any noxious, toxic, or corrosive fumes, smoke, odor, or dust. There will be no loud noises or vibration or objectionable heat glare or radiation beyond the property line and the use will not create any other objectionable condition that will endanger public health and safety. Should this change or if complaints are, re are received in this regard by the landlord or the township, the applicant will take immediate steps to correct the conditions responsible for these environmental impacts and notify the landlord and township in writing how it will mitigate such conditions in the future. There will be no outdoor speakers, intercoms, or uh, music outside the establishment. 
Five, there will be no storage of hazardous, flammable, or explosive materials or waste on the site. Should this condition change, the applicant must immediately notify the landlord and the township of this fact, including the nature of the materials present in the building and the safety plan for their maintenance within the building. Six, deliveries will occur no more than six days a week by van or other small parcel delivery vehicle and at such times so as not to interfere with the flow of traffic or parking and access to the surrounding businesses. Seven, the use shall comply with federal and state laws addressing the Americans with Disabilities Act and all related regulations. Eight, uh, a copy of the lease between the applicant and the landlord shall be provided to the township. Nine, all fees and costs due Newtown Township must be paid in full prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy by the township. Ten, all signage desired by the applicant must conform to the standards established for the Village of Newtown South Shopping Center. Eleven, the applicant's trash removal plan must conform to the trash removal plan adopted for the Village of Newtown South Shopping Center. And uh, finally, uh, outdoor seating will not impede the pedestrian walkway outside the restaurant. Um, Mr. Chairman, it would be uh, appropriate to ask if there is such a motion. Is there such a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Thank you, Mr. Davis. Second. Thank Mr. Calabro seconds it. Thank you. Mr. Solicitor, I, I, maybe I missed it. I might have been taking a nap at that time. <laughs> but, but did you mention hours of operation? Yes. Okay. Not 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Okay. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, thank you. I, must, I, I dozed off at that, uh, that point. It was, probably it was probably before 6 a.m. There you go. Thank you. Thanks for, thanks for checking. I thought I dozed off, too, but I, I did remember hearing it. Sorry about that. <laughs> not, I'll not, try to read more excitement. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a motion and a second. Uh, any uh, further comments from the board? Uh, uh, one comment. You mentioned this is the um, uh, village of Newtown South. Is yeah. that correct? Correct. That's what it's called. That's the, what the, the plan calls this area village at Newtown South. Isn't that where, um, I don't know. That's the, west, probably, you're thinking of. Okay. Um, thinking where so. Harvest is down. But it's not associated with Bricksmore. No. No. All right. Bricksmore is not the owner slash landlord of this property. Okay, thanks for that clarification. Any uh, further questions from the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor of approving the application, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, that, conclu that concludes the hearing. Thank you. Thank, thank you, gentlemen. And uh, as, as fast as we get permits <laughs> and start. <laughs> Yeah. I would say we're, 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 we're hoping uh, uh, probably most likely early September, late August. Yeah. We wish you good luck. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much, guys. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Solicitor, are you ready for that? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the next conditional use hearing uh, is the application of... Um, KB, that's the two letters, KB, United Investments, comma, Inc., uh, to operate a business called for, the number four, and then the word ever, uh, and then the second word, young. Uh, this is a use, D2 medical use, located at 2123 South Eagle Road in the Village at Newtown South Development. Uh, I will mark for the record uh, the application as Exhibit T1, I will mark notice, uh, I'm sorry, proof of publication of notice of tonight's hearing uh, that appeared in the advance of Bucks County on April 10th and April 17th of this year as Exhibit T2. Exhibit T3 is a photograph depicting proof of the posting of the property with notice of tonight's hearing. And Exhibit T4 is the CKS Engineers Review Letter dated March 30th, 2022. Uh, I see Mr. Blackburn is present representing 
uh, the applicant and uh, would turn it over to Mr. Blackburn. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Joe Blackburn from Whistle Pearlstein here on behalf of the applicants, KB United Investment Inc. With respect to their application concerning the approximately 2,500 square foot tenant space located at 2123. Uh, South Eagle Road. Uh, as Mr. Sander previewed, this is located um, in the portion of the, what, we, what I refer to at least as the Amish Market portion of the shopping center, um, almost midway between the Amish Market to the north and the Primos to the south. So pretty much right smack dab in the middle, immediately adjacent to uh, the last application that you just heard considered. Um, that tenant space is presently vacant and the subject of tonight's application is to seek conditional use approval in order to permit a D2 medical office use uh, therein. Specifically that use would consist of a uh, D2 med spa operating as Forever Young. Um, applicant proposes as a part of that use to offer a variety of uh, medical services, med spa services including but not necessarily limit, limited to uh, vitamin IVs, uh, Botox and other fillers, hormone replacement therapies, uh, and a variety of skin care uh, products and services, including hydrofacials, microdermabrasions, and microneedling, all of which was foreign to me prior to working for med spas, I promise. Um, applicant, uh, we are in receipt of the Township Planner's March 30th review letter, which does accurately and fairly summarize the uh, base of operations. I would add that all those services being offered will be um, undertaken and provided by licensed and registered medical professionals in the state of Pennsylvania. Obviously, that's uh, for first and foremost. Um, with respect to the Township Planner's Review Letter, again, that fairly and accurately summarizes the operation with respect to hours, employees, et cetera. I would supplement that information, however, with uh, the deliveries and pickups that are anticipated. With respect to deliveries, um, we're talking about small medical packages, uh, not anticipating more than one delivery a week. Those would be via parcel delivery, you know, UPS, FedEx, and the like. Um, with respect to pickup, uh, there obviously is a medical waste component um, to the med spa or any, any medical office use. Uh, all medical waste will be stored interior to the site, no outdoor drop-off or pickup boxes, and would be scheduled for pickup by a third-party vendor at a scheduled and designated time and location, uh, which would be, again, interior to the site. Um, that pickup is, again, anticipated to be required no more than once a week. So one, de one anticipated delivery, one anticipated pickup, if you will. Um, again, the uh, Township Planner's Review Letter otherwise fairly summarizes the operation. I am joined uh, by Kelly Vallette, uh principal of the applicant, and can certainly make myself or Ms. Vallette available for any questions that any members of the board or its professionals may have. Thank you, Mr. Blackburn. Uh, questions from the board? Mr. Sanders, do they have to be sworn in? Uh, no. I'm sorry. If they're going to testify, they will. It's, no. Well, why don't we well, swear them in just in case? Sworn sure. In. Good um, idea. Can you uh, state and spell your name? Kelly Vallit, K E L L Y V L I E T. And Ms. Vallit, you heard the brief summary that I offered for the benefit of the board? Yes, sir. And was all that fair and accurate to the best of your knowledge? Yes, it was. Thank you. <clears throat> I guess I get to go first. Sure. Uh, one, one basic question, um, and it's a reiteration, of, I think, of something uh, you said, Mr. Blackburn, that uh, the, the services are going to be performed by licensed medical professionals, uh, and there'll be, I guess, if not a doctor on site, a doctor available on call. Correct. There will be a, a complement or a slew of registered nurses, physicians' assistants, and um, and licensed doctors yeah. uh, providing the services and available to supervise the, the services, yes. And, and following, of course, all the rules and regulations of the Pennsylvania. Absolutely. The state of Pennsylvania. Absolutely. Great. That's what I had. Anyone else? Seeing none. Uh, I, I have some. Okay. Sure. Um, what, what kind of med medical designation would be, would they be licensed as? Um, and Ms. Fleet, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you, there will be RN, registered nurses, physicians, assistants, and med, nurse practitioners, and uh, MDs, medical doctors, all overseen by medical doctors. On -site. Okay, but, but there, there's not a medical doctor on site. That's just in case something were to happen, this medical doctor will be, will be called in. Yeah, or? come on. Yeah. Our medical director will be on site at times, and we will follow all the rules and regulations 
with the corporate practice of medicine in Pennsylvania. Okay. Well, what, when you say at times, what do you, what, what do you estimate at times? Um, I know he doesn't have to be there 24-7, but I mean, what do you, how often do you think a medical doctor will be showing up? Um, I mean, he'll be there on a weekly basis. We're still working out the terms and conditions, okay. um, whether it's our medical director or another physician or licensed nurse practitioner or PA. We will have someone on site at, at any time at which we're doing any medical-related procedure. Okay. And, and what, is, what, what is your medical designation, if you don't mind my asking? I am not a licensed practitioner. Okay. Um, I'm a business owner, and okay. this was an investment. I have a background in pharma, I'm building a team of licensed practitioners that can fulfill the duties and responsibilities of okay. this business. So will you be a uh, hands-on person? Will you be there? or Yes, I, I will be an owner-operator. Okay. Yes. But, but not an administrator of any, any kind of medicine or any yeah. kind of, uh, okay. Right. There's a, a business operation kind of umbrella, which Ms. Halit, um, okay. through a management company handles. And then the, the service providers will be separately um, contracted for and licensed directly to the state. Gotcha. Yes. It's okay. actually called an MSO in the state of Pennsylvania, Managing Services Organization, which I'll be the head of. We have a managing services agreement with the practice group. Okay. And it's a very and it, detailed. No, that, yeah, that, that's great. Can, can I just want to add? What would a person go there for? Maybe you could describe what, what services you would be offering. And sure. it's just televised, so, you know. Yeah, so let, yeah, let, yeah, let sure. the people know what you're um, doing. Well, over, you know, in the past 10 to 15 years, the whole, um, the whole idea and overall concept of preserving the way we look has become much more commonplace and a lot less taboo. Um, the focus of our business will be to not only preserve the way we look, but the way we feel. Um, preserving our bodies from the inside out and helping individuals with the help of nutraceutical and vitamin therapies um, help balance out our bodies from the inside out mm -hmm. so we get the best results from not only looking, looking our best and feeling our best. So we can get the aesthetics, uh, the filler, the Botox, the um, microneedling and facials but you can also benefit from the vitamins, nutraceuticals, and hormone replacement therapy. So health, wellness, and anti-aging. Yes, for every young, fountain of youth. Gotcha, okay, thank you. You're welcome. I had a question. Uh, are these services covered by Medicare? No, no, <laughs> they are not yeah. at this time. Any other uh, questions or comments from the board, Mr. Chairman? No? Okay. Um, I think at this time it's appropriate to call for public comment. Is there any public comment from the uh, in-person audience here or uh, via uh, streaming? I'm not seeing anybody in the room. Uh, Ms. McGovern, any questions or comments on the online? No? Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> At this time, uh, Mr. Chairman, would it be appropriate to uh, frame a motion for the board to consider? Yes, it would. Please do. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, if the board is of a mind, it would be a motion to grant the application of KB United Investments, Inc. <clears throat> for a business to be known as Forever Young, a use D2 medical use, located at 2123 South Eagle Road in the village at Newtown South Shopping Center. The property is zoned PC Planned Commercial District. Approval is granted subject to the applicant's compliance with the following conditions. First, compliance with the CKS Engineers Review Letter dated March 30th, 2022. Second, the hours of operation will be from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday with the business being closed on Sunday. Three, there will be eight employees on each of two shifts. Each day it is open for business. Four, potential environmental impacts. Uh, this use will not disseminate any noxious, toxic, or corrosive fumes, smoke, odor, or dust. Further, there will not be no loud noise or vibration nor objectionable heat glare or radiation beyond the property line, nor will the use create any other objectionable condition that will endanger public health and safety. 
Five, there will be no storage of hazardous materials nor waste on site other than the medical uh, waste that we heard testimony on, and we'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, should this change, the applicant must immediately notify the township of the identity of such hazardous materials and the steps being taken to render them safe while on the premises. Six, um, with regard to deliveries, deliveries will be by van or small parcel truck approximately once a week before business hours so as to minimize any traffic or parking issues while most businesses near them are open. Seven, the use shall comply with all federal and state laws addressing the Americans with Disabilities Act and related regulations. Eight, a copy of the lease between the applicant and the landlord must be provided to the township. Nine, all fees and costs due Newtown Township must be paid in full prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy. Ten, all signage desired by the applicant must conform to the standards established for the village at Newtown South Shopping Center. Uh, Eleven, trash removal must conform to the trash removal plan adopted for the village at Newtown South Shopping Center. Additionally, dispo disposal of any and all medical waste must be described in detail as to the nature of the medical waste and the professional removal company utilized for that purpose. Medical waste shall be stored indoors only, shall not be stored outdoors or in outdoor boxes, and scheduled pickups by a private contractor shall occur approximately once, week, once per week. And finally, uh, there shall be uh, registered nurses, nurse practitioners, physician's assistants, and medical doctors uh, present or on call at all times that the business is operating. Is there such a motion? Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Uh, so I'll, I'll make the motion, and would you like to second it? Ms. Snyder is a second. Uh, any further comment from the board? Any from the public? Seeing none, call the question. All those in favor of approving the conditional use application of Forever Young, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? 5 0. The motion carries. And that will conclude the hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and good luck. Any, uh, I'll ask the same question that Mr. Calabro asked the other group. When do we think it'll be open? Oh, uh, we're hoping for end of July, early August. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. The next public hearing uh, will not be stenographically recorded, and you can see our court reporter um, packing up, uh, okay. which is, is appropriate. I told her that. Um, this is a uh, request for a PRD variance. Um, this is the application of Keith W. and Beth A. Torok. Their address is 183 Greenbrier Lane uh, in Newtown Township. Um, this is uh, for relief, uh, as we will hear from uh, Mr. Blackburn representing the applicant um, for an addition. And um, I would, for um, identification purposes sake, Mark the application filed on March 3rd, 2022 as Exhibit T1, <clears throat> uh, proof of publication of the notice of the hearing uh, appearing in the advance of Bucks County on April 10th and April 17th as Exhibit T2, a photograph depicting the posting of the property with notice of this evening's hearing as Exhibit T3, and the Remington Vernick and, uh, Remington and Vernick Engineers review letter dated March 23rd, 2022 as Exhibit T4, Mr. Blackburn. Uh, good evening, Joe Blackburn from Whistler Pearlstein here on behalf of the applicants, Keith and Beth Torok, with respect to their application concerning the property located at 183 Greenbrier Lane. Uh, subject property is located in the R2 High Density Residential Zoning District and presently consists of just over uh, 12,300 square feet in area. Uh, subject property is presently improved with a single family detached dwelling uh, and as depicted on the, um, the permit plan that was submitted with the application, uh, backs up to the approximately 30 acres of open space um, for the Woods of Saxony planned residential development uh, here in Newtown, um, 
on uh, off of North Washington Crossing Road. Um, the location of the property in the Woods of Saxony PRD is somewhat significant. Um, I'm sure this board is aware of the uh, typical jurisdiction for zoning variances going to the zoning hearing board. There is a carve out, if you will, that variances for planned residential developments come to this board. So you are tonight sitting in a judicial capacity, quasi-judicial capacity, effectively as the zoning hearing board. Um, the criteria and standards which, with which the applicant need comply uh, or demonstrate compliance with are the same for any typical variance, um, which uh, we, will, we will talk about momentarily. Um, the applicants have resided at this property for approximately 28 years, raised their family there, and now seek to uh, allow themselves the opportunity to age in place in this uh, home with, within which they've lived for 28 years. When they moved in 28 years ago, they did uh, install a patio, uh, which is, again, depicted on the plan, submitted with the application. And you'll note that that patio very clearly extends over the rear building setback line. Um, that is permitted under the current ordinances within the R2 district, which permits patios to encroach as close as 10 feet to the rear property line. We are certainly far in excess of that uh, with respect to the patio. The present application seeks to enclose that patio or put walls and a roof over that patio, thereby converting it to building. And uh, as the ordinance um, very clearly states, there is a building setback line, which is separate and distinct from the reduced patio setback line, such that the conversion of that patio to a building triggers the rear yard setback relief, which is being requested tonight, specifically to permit a 24.87 foot rear yard setback whereas a 32.74 setback would otherwise be required. Uh, I would note that all other side yard relief, all impervious relief, all building coverage relief, or excuse me, all side yard um, criteria, all impervious coverage criteria and building coverage criteria are satisfied. The sole item of relief is with, with respect to the setback from the rear yard to the 30 acre open space. Um, submitted with our application were letters of support from both the Rose and Agasar family who abut the subject property to the north and south respectively. Also submitted with the application was a letter of support from the Homeowners Association itself, um, all of whom have seen the application, uh, had the opportunity to comment upon it and, and uh, support the longtime neighbors and residents, the Torox. Uh, we are also in receipt of the Remington Vernick review letter. Um, which uh, all of which the comments, all comments of which are will complies, generally plan notes and signature blocks and things of that nature. They do raise one comment with respect to a retaining wall, uh, which is referenced in one of the neighbor letters uh, that was um, accurately identified at the Planning Commission and I think uh, is best described as a, a misinterpretation of the plan by that neighbor and property owner. There is no relief, no, none of the scope of relief or improvements proposed contemplate a retaining wall or any additional impervious. I would add that we do have additional impervious to accommodate a relocated patio should they so desire to do so in the future. But uh, all of the comments in the RVE letter are will complies. We have the letters of support of the neighbors. I would um, ask the board's indulgence if uh, Ms. Torak, who is joining me today, could maybe um, just briefly confirm that from her chair as opposed to coming up to the lectern. Um, Ms. Torak, you heard the summary that I've just given to the board, and is all of that accurate to the best of your knowledge? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I have nothing further. I can certainly make myself or Ms. Torak available for any questions that the board or professionals may have. Any questions from the board? The only one I had was about the retaining wall, and that sounds like it was answered, so. Yes. And you'll be following the Remington Veronik letter, so. Correct. I'm good. Any other questions? Yeah, well, I, I had one in, in regards to impervious, but I think he answered that question also. We are not seeking any impervious relief, and we have plus or minus, don't quote, between two and 400 additional square feet of impervious okay. to play with, if you will, uh, before we would need any, any impervious relief. Gotcha. Okay. And I would, I would also add, because the question was raised at the Planning Commission, the Torox did have the foresight um, despite this patio being constructed 28 years ago, it was, it is foundationally sound. The structure will go directly on top of the slab patio as it exists today. No additional footers or modifications are required. They're just going straight up. Okay. So all they're really doing is extending it a little bit. Uh, there's no extension beyond what the patio exists today. Okay. Um, but the patio will be converted to building. Gotcha.
Any other comments from the board? Mr. Solicitor, do you have a? Um, <clears throat> I guess we ought to ask for public comment at this okay. time, Mr. Chairman. Any public comment uh, on the application, on the PRD variance application? Um, well, we're still in the hearing part of it, so I, I wanted to throw it out there uh, now. But we can certainly ask for public comment after we yeah, make we a motion. We will ask for a motion as well. Yeah. Um, oh, we'll, we will ask for them. Yeah. I thought this thought maybe the hearing was a little different, but yeah, hearing I like to just you know before we frame a motion. Um, but Ms. McGovern, I any uh, comments from the uh, streaming service? Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, you may. Please. Uh, the if the course. board is of a mind, it would be to grant the application, a motion, motion to grant the application of Keith W. and Beth A. Torok, 183 Greenbrier Lane, for a PRD variance to uh, allow um, the addition proposed uh, to encroach. Um, into the uh, rear yard setback, uh, the uh, minimum rear yard setback requirement is 32.74 feet. The request is to have a 24.87 foot uh, rear yard setback, and that is the extent of the relief. Uh, the relief will be conditioned on uh, the applicant complying with the Remington and Vernick engineer's letter dated March 23, 2022, uh, the applicant obtaining all permits and approvals required for the work to be performed, and the project being um, performed in compliance with the testimony and evidence presented to the board this evening. <clears throat> this evening. Okay, that's a motion. Do we have a, uh, that's the framing the motion. Do we have a, I'll make, the make the motion. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Do we have a second? Awesome. Who wants to do it? Ms. Ms. Snyder can do it. Come on, I want to get my name in a minute. <laughs> you have another chance. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. Any further questions or comments from the board? Any from the public? Any from the internet? Seeing none and giving it appropriate time for someone to email yet. Um, let me call the question. All those in favor of approving this PRD variance, if I've got it right, please Signify by saying aye. Aye. And any opposed? I didn't. I didn't say aye, but I'm. It's five zero. Great. Enjoy. Thank you very much, yes. everyone. Enjoy. Have enjoy. a good night. No land development. Uh, we do have reports from officials, and the engineers. Item was taken off, but I do recollect that there was a question about the streetlight procurement program. Sure, do you want me to I can provide an update if that works for everyone. What's that? I can provide an update if that yes, works please. for everyone. Yep. So the last time, our last update regarding uh, the township's involvement with the DVRPC streetlight program was that uh, we had reached out, we had had a kickoff meeting with DVRPC, and based on the timing of their phase three funding. It wasn't ideal for the township at that time in terms of the budgeting process. So that said, they were, DVRPC with Keystone Lighting was looking into a possible phase four um, for another round of funding that the township could be included in. Uh, they're having a meeting tomorrow to formalize that. So hopefully I'll have some more information after that. But basically uh, the gist would be that that phase would kick off this summer. So again, the township could be involved with completing a letter of intent. Um, and moving forward with not a feasibility study, but basically a budgetary analysis they could provide at no cost to the township um, that would allow the township to possibly budget in the future to complete this project. So again, we're sort of in the waiting game until they have this meeting tomorrow, but hopefully I'll have some more information to report on that. But. Thank you. Any, any questions? further questions for our engineer? Mr. Clarbo? Leanne, do we have an, est an estimated cost of what this may be, since we have to do the budget? When, uh, when we first met with them, they had an idea of the feasibility study, and it was roughly, I think, $30,000 for the study at that point. So 
they understood that hey, that's a little bit of a sticker shock. So what they would propose to us, and they'll iron out those details tomorrow, is possibly doing a budgetary analysis prior to that. So hopefully it would give us, uh, you know, a more accurate picture of what we could look for. P past the feasibility. Past the feasibility yeah. phase, yep. So hopefully, you know, if we get to that phase, we'll, we'll get a little more information from them. But. Good question. Oh, are, there any, um, are there any grants available for, for this kind of project? There are, yep, so we keep, um, we have a lot of grants that we cycle through in research, so absolutely when we see one for these, you know, we'll definitely let the township know to apply. I think that issue came up at the Economic Development Committee uh, where Mr. Dorland from uh, uh, Pico. Pico mentioned that there were some grants related to that. I don't, I don't know, all, remember all the details, but we have a contact with Pico if you want to. Yeah, we'll, we'll de yep, I can reach out to them and we'll definitely research some other grants as well. Thank you all. Okay, I think that brings us to solicitor's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> First item on our report this evening is um, an advertised ordinance for consideration by the board this evening. Um, this is an ordinance that establishes a no parking zone on the west side of North Sycamore Street. Uh, from the center line of its intersection with Silo Drive to a point 120 feet north of Silo Drive. And it also establishes a four-way stop intersection at the intersections of Everett Drive and Lower Dolington Road and Yorkshire Drive and Lower Dolington Road. As noted, the ordinance has been uh, advertised for uh, consideration uh, for enactment by the board this evening. Uh, if the board is of a mind, it would be a motion to enact ordinance number 2022-0-2. So okay. Uh, do we have a motion? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Mr. Mack. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Calabro. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion about this ordinance? I think we have telegraphed this. We've discussed it a couple of times. So, um, I don't see any discussion from the board, any from the public? On, on any issue or just on About this issue. issue. Okay. And nothing, from the, nothing from the virtual world. Okay, very good. Uh, seeing none, call the question. Those in favor of adopting ordinance number 12. 2022-0-2, if I've got it right. Um, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5 nothing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, last item on our report is the uh, board's consideration of the upcoming zoning hearing board applications to be heard by the zoning hearing board on May 5th. Uh, that is next Thursday. Um, the first two, as you heard, previewed by um, the Planning Commission report uh, are uh, residential. Uh, the third is the Volta charging uh, stations, the uh, proposal to install two electric vehicle charging stations uh, in the um, Acme Shopping Center uh, parking lot. And the question, as it always is, is does the board wish to take a position on these um, applications? And uh, if so, uh, does it wish to send the solicitor to um, state that position at the hearing? Um, well, as I mentioned before, the Volta charging is still on the agenda for the Zoning Hearing Board. And so I guess uh, the Zoning Hearing Board, and we have to, in my opinion, uh, send a, somebody to the meeting, I guess, to represent us to oppose this if they do decide to go before the Zoning Hearing Board. Uh, primarily because of what uh, Ms. Driscoll said that we, uh, we prohibit at the moment this electronic signage that's part of their application. And uh, we need to be ready if they uh, don't ask for an extension, we need to m make sure we've decided that somebody should be there to oppose this. I agree with Mr. Mack. Uh, I, I have no problems with charging stations. I don't like the idea of having the, the signage and advertisements and whatnot. Uh, I'm against that. So uh, I would make a motion to send our solicitor to oppose that application for Volta charging. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. 
Okay. Uh, Mr. Davis, if there's a motion, and Ms. Snyder was the second. Um, I have a little bit of discussion myself, if I may, and then I'll pass it down. Um, I, I, I oppose this as well uh, in its current form. Uh, number one, we're drafting an ordinance. There's being an ordinance being drafted around electronic charging stations, so that's still to come. Uh, number two, we have the prohibition against uh, digital, digital signs and ads. And number two, or number three, that's three. <laughs> I, I, can't we just have a charging station that, that you pay for? Or maybe free and underwritten by, the, by a group of merchants? Uh, so I, I, I don't know why we have to go with one that has the advertising. And it does, when I, when I saw the, the proposal, it looked like it was going to be like two foot by four foot. So and that's going to be very bright. So that's the, the, those are my thoughts about it. Um, so I would agree. I know there was some comment on. Uh, yeah, I, 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 haven't, I haven't seen the actual um, charging station. But it, but it's supposedly seven feet high. Is that is that what I'm reading exactly. uh, in, in this? Okay. Eighty inches. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, I, I know that when I go to the gas stations, whether it's uh, Sunoco or whatever, uh, I usually stand there and watch something on a screen that they they usually promote, which is an advertisement. And sometimes it's actually an advertisement about a baseball game. So it, it's, it's already playing on, on regular gasoline pumps. I, I, I don't know what the hindrance is here, especially if we can control the times that this is being visible. Like if we were to say you could only have your sign from 6 a.m. to 6, 6 p.m. In other words, at nighttime, it wouldn't be a diversion for anybody. First of all, it's going to be in a parking lot. Is that correct? So it's not going to be interfering with traffic. So it's not like traffic is going to be going by and getting blinded by these lights. Right. It's in the uh, Acme Shopping Center. Okay. Um, now, I understand, uh, you know, can merchants, you know, support this or pay for it? Well... But Volta Charging is in the business of charging, uh, charging stations. And the way they make money is to have advertisement on there. From what I read, Tesla won't let any other car but a Tesla charge off of the Tesla stations. So, I mean, there is some sort of limitation. Th this year is going to let any car going to be charged off of here. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I don't... I, well, bottom line is I'm against sending the solicitor because I don't know what the problem is. When the jointure had established digital signs, what they had intended were these billboards that kept changing. That you ever see them where they're lit up and then they change from one company to the next. And they didn't want them in any kind of uh, spot. Like say, I'll just for instance, there is a um, Thompson, a Thompson car uh, billboard on 413 near Dumac, um, Dumac uh, Engineering. They wouldn't want that to be a flashing type of mm -hmm. billboard. But I, I, I mean, when you're only talking about a, a two foot sign, four foot. Uh, I, I, or four foot, I mean, I mean, come on, four feet. <laughs> come on. Wait, I mean, no, that's, no, not, that's, no, not that's, that's not a billboard. That's not a billboard. screen. The screen is not the male definition of size. Uh, well, I mean, you know, maybe it's bigger. But, uh, but what, I, what I'm saying is, you, you know, here we're talking about progress, and we want to hinder progress. Well, I don't want these signs on our gas stations either, if, for the record. I think they're tacky and ugly and annoying. Oh, well, they entertain me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, whether they're tacky or what, but what I'm saying, they're not, they're not doing anything obscene. They're usually it's the news or whatever. Yeah. But, but, I mean, uh, and plus, uh, gasoline stations are on the road. So somebody could be distracted by, by the, the lights of a, 
uh, the gas pump and, and the, the visual. Yeah. These are going to be in the Acme parking lot. Yeah. Now, unless somebody's a bad parker, uh, I, I don't know what their distraction would be. I mean, that, that's just... Here, here's my thought about that. If, if it was a screen that was only like a tele, that small television screen that's at one, at one of the gas stations, like, what is that, one by, you know, a foot square maybe? If it, if it was just that, so for the individual right at that, at that particular location, mm -hmm. I, I might be able to accept that. But it, 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 this is something that appears to me that it's mm -hmm. going to be aisles over that you'd be able to see this brightness. Well, I, I, again, that's the whole idea. These, this advocate. year's going to be in the Acme parking lot, from what I understand. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, there's signs from Applebee's. There's signs from Chick Fil A that are that are lit signs. I mean, um, so I mean, we're talking about you're pulling up, you're going to charge your car at the quickest. What, uh, Ellen, what do they say the quickest is? How long? Forty minutes. Forty minutes. So you're going to stand there 40 minutes and just look at a machine. I mean, that's what the entertainment value is of this. And plus, it's, it's advertising. They, they want to advertise. Mr. Clever, I, mean, I, I kind of agree with you, but we, you, you made some suggestions that the drencher should consider drawing up an ordinance, and that's what we need to wait for. Well, my question to the solicitor is, can Newtown Township do a standalone? Sorry, what was that? Not, not to amend the zoning ordinance. We could do a standalone ordinance to try to regulate this, but uh, the, the township, all of the township sign regulations are contained within the zoning ordinance, and it would be appropriate if we're going to provide for these signs to do so in the zoning ordinance and not just the standalone ordinance. I just, I'd like to say that I would be totally against this. Uh, First of all, normal charging stations, Volta is, has a very small percentage of the market. Uh, other charging companies uh, are, are used a lot more. Their stature is very diminutive and they are not garish in any way. They blend in and uh, that's what I would want for Newtown Township. I don't want to see any flashing signs that I would be opposed to that. Well, and I, I, nobody wants to see flashing signs that are going to blink, blink, blink. But I, I guess this is a this is a final decision after we make it, is whether Acme wants to adhere to it. And we've all seen where some companies didn't want to adhere to a, um, you know, an extra lane to put into Chick Fil A because we denied that. So we deny this. Acme may say, well, forget it. We're not going to put them in at all, and uh, then we're going to lose Volta. Anything, Walter, Schmalta, whoever it may be, may never come to Newtown. No, there are, there are other charger, charging companies. Well, I don't think that's our job to go and no, find who the charging companies sure. are. By we're, not, we're, not in, we're not in that business. What we're in is trying to approve the best possible thing for the citizens of Newtown Township. And, uh, 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 you know, I don't know. Maybe we could tell me how many people are on the uh, YouTube tonight that are voicing their opinion. <laughs> Nobody. By the way, uh, Volta may not even be in business because I read in Bloomberg that last month the two founding members resigned. Mm -hmm. So their business model may not be uh, uh, tenable or whatever. Uh, and so you're, well, saying, you're saying this whole discussion might be moot because it could uh, be moot. Would, I don't know, but it offers no. what it does. It's not moot. No. What it does is it gives us an idea of the kinds of charging stations, the different kinds of charging stations that might be out there if we want to write a, an ordinance. And by the way, uh, I listened today to a PennDOT uh, uh, webinar about charging stations, and they have a draft ordinance that they're going to have ready by the end of this week. So basically, what I'm thinking is that maybe uh, this is an okay idea, I don't know, but if they said they want to table it, I, I'm saying that they should uh, take it off the table of the zoning hearing board, and insofar as they haven't done that yet, we send somebody there in case just to delay this 
so that we get a chance to really uh, think about it some more. Okay. Are we ready? Well, we also don't want to have uh, stations put in by the $44 billion man who is the next biggest guy player in the uh, electric stations, and that's, that's, <laughs> that's Mr. <laughs> Musk. And, yeah. and, I mean, there's nothing to say. You're saying this business, this, there's only a limited amount of companies that do this. Um, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I just think that uh, we roll the dice with this Volta and see what happens. But mm -hmm. I'm in the minority here, so it doesn't matter. You're holding your own. Uh, any further discussion from the board? Is this going to go to the zoning hearing board? Or is that what we're trying to eliminate? Well, this is, no, this is going to the zoning hearing board. It's scheduled to be heard on May 5th. The issue is, have they already, and we don't know it, or will they request a continuance of the hearing? But if they don't request a continuance and they proceed to the zoning hearing board and the board votes to send me, I'm going next Thursday. So we're sending you to defend us against oh. our own zoning hearing board, of which I have faith that they'll make the right decision. I'm sorry. Okay, so we do have a motion and a second. We have a motion on the floor. Uh, we've had our discussion. Is there any discussion from the public? Okay, we got, we got two. Go ahead. Please state your name. Uh, my name is Bradley Cooper. I live in Fort Aspen Court. Um, I work in the automotive industry. I've been doing it for about eight, nine years. Um, I work at the AAA in uh, Langhorn, right across from the Bonefish Grill in the shopping center on North uh, Oxford Valley Road, which is across from the Best Buy to give you guys kind of a reference of where I work. Uh, we do have a charging station there. Um, I don't know the exact company. I'm not a charging expert, as some of you guys are. And it doesn't have any flashy signs. It doesn't have anything protruding out of it to take your eyes away from all of the area around there. It works perfectly fine. People come in, plug it in, go. With the signs and the billboards or whatever they do at uh, gas pumps, people there are actually sitting there pumping up their gas, so they're going to look at that. They're going to read or watch what's going to be shown on that uh, uh, monitor or billboard or whatever they have to show a picture or something. When you plug in a car for an electric charging, they understand it's going to be 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes to charge up their car. So they're either doing it and they're going to leave. So most people are not going to look at that sign and or billboard or building or, you know, whatever size it is and actually watch what it's going to be. They're just going to plug it in and go. The only people are really going to look at is people that are walking by and might have an idea, uh, uh, you know, an idea of like, oh, I know that. Or, hey, a little kid walking by saying, oh, that's right there. Or look at that or whatever. That's about all you're going to get from that or whatever. I don't like the idea of having big billboards and stuff put everywhere. And one of the things, again, I'm not a zoning expert, but one of the things that we fought uh, and talked about and had with Wawa is you can't have an LED sign. So if we're going to change the rules for this to be allowed, then you got to tell Wawa, oh, then you can have an LED sign. And that goes against what we kind of fought against. Um, from what I interpreted from the zoning hearings that I sat at, listening about signage and you can't have backlit lights and all that stuff. So I don't think that portion of it is a good idea. I think if you want to use it, we should tell them that, hey, these are the rules. You have to follow them. If you want to put it in there, fine, do it. And the other thing is, um, I'm not opposed of it, but a parking lot in Newtown uh, Shopping Center, may it be Newtown um, uh, Acme, may it be next to where the Iron Hill is, the parking there is so atrocious. You can barely get in and out of those places. You can barely park um, on certain days, on like a Saturday or Sunday, it's jam-packed. You can't even get in because of the um, Chick-fil-A getting backed up, so you can't even get off of um, Newtown Bypass there or uh, Durham Road to even get into the shopping center. I think that if we want to allow these type of things to grow or get more and take away parking from people that don't have an electric car, that we should try to figure out a way that we can expand the parking lot to accommodate more things that are going to take away parking from people that can't afford an electric car, don't have one at the moment. So I would say that even if we do approve this, try to think about how it's going to affect the parking or driving or getting in and out uh, of the area. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Gary Christensen, uh, 6 7 Kirkwood Drive. Uh, and I said, I also sit on the uh, plan Township Planning Commission. A couple of points. Um, the representative from Volta uh, said to us that he had, he had 
served, he worked, I think he said, for 10 years for Tesla. Uh, and that at one point in time, it was true that Teslas could only be charged at Tesla stations, but he said they've had to become more humble than that. The description of the sign says it uh, uh, would be a high impact uh, visual display. Uh, that seems a little more, uh, the little, little display on the, on the on, while you're pumping your gas seems much more passive than, than this. Um, I, the other thing I would say is earlier in the day, we'd had a visit, as, as Mr. Mack has said, we had a visit from a representative from PICO. And he seemed very optimistic that we will see a lot of people wanting to install charging stations in the near future. So I don't think that, that uh, getting a, uh, taking our time making a decision about Volta puts us in any danger of losing access. I think that there will be a lot of people, uh, my sense from the PICO representative, there will be a lot of people, a lot of companies uh, wanting to uh, get into this market. Thank you. Any other questions? While you all were talking, I checked my phone. I have two separate apps for charging my car. Uh, so th there, are some, there are some companies out there that do it. Can I just say that, yes, Tesla, uh, they started it. So yes, they probably have the most charging stations. I'm sure they do. And I do believe that Tesla only serves Tesla, if I'm not mistaken. But the point is that every other car manufacturer is now making electric cars that won't be able to hook up to a Tesla charging station. So obviously, we, there's a need there that is not for the, the Tesla model. Uh, and that's what I would have to say about it. You can't go by Tesla. Any other comments before we call the question? Seeing none, OK, thank you. Uh, I'll call the question. Those in favor of sending the <coughs> um, township solicitor to the zoning hearing board to oppose this application, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion passes four to one. Thank you. thank you, Mr. Chairman. That concludes our report. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Solicitor. Um, that brings us to the manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. General fund balance as of this evening is $5,428,322. Plan expiration is before the board with no action required. We have Chief Forsyth here to give the monthly emergency services report. Evening, Chief. How's everybody doing tonight? Fine, thank you. Uh, the monthly report for Newtown Emergency Services and the Fire Association for the month of March, we responded to 99 calls of service. We completed 59 annual fire safety inspections in the township and 58 annual fire safety inspections in Newtown Borough. We responded to 20 alarm systems, 52 EMS calls, two fumes in calls, eight building fires, six dwelling fires, two traffic accidents, three wires calls, one auto extrication, and two investigations and one chimney. Uh, the calls for service in municipalities, we had three calls for service in the borough. One was a working fire on South State Street. The Fire Association and Emergency Services both responded to that. They did a terrific job. As the fire chief, that's my biggest nightmare as a fire on State Street, and we were extremely successful in containing that to one building. Uh, we also responded on the second alarm to the Levittown bowling lanes uh, on March 30th with Falls Township. And that is my report for the month of March. I would like to say that the Fire Association announced last night that the annual Brew Fest will be on September 17th at the normal location on South State Street. And our annual drive for recruiting has begun. So hopefully I'll get some applications for permits to put up some lawn signs again so that we can start and push for recruiting more volunteers. We are in desperate need of volunteers. 
If there's anyone at home that has some free time that would like to join us, we would be more than happy to have you. Uh, regardless of your age, your gender, uh, our door is open to everyone. I think I need to be about 40 years younger. We can find a place for you, Mr. Fisher. <laughs> We have nice 35-foot ladders that we can get you to start throwing for us. There you go. Any questions? Uh, I just wanted to say something. Um, I know a lot of uh, young people in Newtown probably have college educations and all that. But I remember my son looking for a job, and I said, you know, uh, you're a big guy. You should become a volunteer firefighter because, number one, a lot of those guys there and women have uh, businesses of their own, and it's a great way to also network. And who knows, you might find a job uh, by networking with people like that. Uh, of course, he didn't listen to me, so sorry. Well, we're hosting the Newtown Businessmen's Association meeting tomorrow morning at 7.30 at the firehouse in the borough. So it's, it's a great place to network. Um, the fire association is out there trying to sell ourselves, and we're doing the best we can. Unfortunately, people have very busy schedules now, and finding two hour, 200 hours of initial training is very difficult for people to find. So we have instituted our weekend uh, duty crew system that the township has funded for us this year, so that is kicking off this weekend. We've written new policies and procedures to get that done, so hopefully we will... Uh, have enough people to ride the apparatus on the weekends. Again, anyone, anyone is welcome in the firehouse. Uh, we'll train you. We'll, you know, we'll give you refreshments at our meeting. Uh, we, we're doing everything we can to try to get young people, middle-aged people, males, females. Um, I'm very proud of the fact that our deputy chief is a female. She's an outstanding firefighter. Um, so there's room for everyone. Um, the last thing I would like to say is uh, Tim Chamberlain has been with the Emergency Services Department for 14 years. He has done his tour with us on the 30th of April. Um, our dear good friend, Mr. Kurt Ferguson, has stolen him from us to go to Lower Makefield to be the Director of Fire Services. I'd like to wish Tim well. He has served us well. He's served the community well, and he certainly will be missed here. So that's just for the record. Uh, is there any idea when uh, uh, we w might get an idea of grant approval or not? For well, the wonderful people at FEMA have told us anywhere from May 15th to the end of September. So we are keeping our fingers crossed. Um, I've spent the last two weeks dealing with FEMA and FEMA, and uh, I had more hair two weeks ago, and it was a little bit less gray, but... Um, they're, they're very different people to deal with. And Dave's sitting over there, he thinks that's funny. But uh, um, it's a challenge. And, and unfortunately, we keep calling. Uh, I've reached out to some of our local politicians. Uh, and, and they can only do so much. So we're just keeping our fingers crossed. And hopefully, we're successful. I'd like to say one more thing, that the Fire Association has their own sort of Amazon app where they have a wish list. Uh, I can't think of the name of the app. Can you? I will bring when it, it. When it comes to technology, okay. I'm the worst person in the world. So. Right. But they have a list where uh, any member of the public can uh, access yep. to see what their needs are and uh, donate some of the items that they uh, desperately need at the firehouse. So. And you probably could find it. I bet it's on, the, on their website. Yeah, yes, it is. I bet it is. It is on the website. Chief, I just had a question in regards to um, uh, mutual aid, and I know we had that, like you said, we had that fire in uh, Newtown Borough. Yes. Uh, what other fire departments reported to that? Um, the call in Newtown Borough was, on the initial call, was us, Yardley, Makefield, Northampton was the initial call. Okay. Um, due to the severity of the call, we called in additional companies. They came from Langhorn. Pendel was our RIT team. They're, they're, to, they're assigned to protect the firefighters on the scene. 
uh, Lingahawken was our cover, and Upper Makefield and Lower Southampton came in with a ladder tower. Okay, and, and when mutual aid is uh, either comes to us or we go to them, there's no cost to mutual aid. Is that is that true? No, sir. We have a mutual aid agreement with the, okay. all the fire departments in the county. Okay, because the question was 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 brought to me that. Some people think that when we report to a mutual aid call, we should get paid by that township for reporting to that mutual aid call. But that's why it's mutual aid. Correct. And uh, I think some people just have the the term incorrect, yeah. and they're thinking that uh, uh, they should be getting paid for answering a call in another township if that's the case. But yes. We are under agreement with Northampton right now. They have demolished both of their fire stations to build new stations that are fit for 24-7 service. Um, Northampton is paying us to run a certain section of Holland. So they pay us, uh, I'm not even sure of the fee, but it's a, it's a monthly fee that we bill them for. And so we're running maybe two or three calls a month in Northampton at this point. That's a special situation. Yes, that's that's a special situation. Okay. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Great. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Chairman, I have one other item under my report. Yes. Please recall that the uh, township has authorized CKS engineers to bid out the remaining work uh, of the unfinished portion of the villas of Newtown, which, which included the basin. Uh, they had received bids. <clears throat> the bids came back in far over uh, the estimated cost to do the, the improvements. Uh, they had provided a letter that has been included in the board's packets to uh, reject the bids and to rebid the project with a different scope of work. The appropriate motion would be <clears throat> authorization to for CKS to reject the bids received for the improvements of the villas at Newtown and to authorize CKS engineers to rebid the project. So moved. I have a motion. Do we have a second? I have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion from the board? So when it gets rebid, you're going to have to come up with a different plan, like for the basin, I guess. That's and, their intention, yes. And um, I, I just noticed that one of those bids was nearly $90,000 $90, less than the other two, which were kind of very similar. I'm just curious. I, I, all of them were too high, obviously. But um, can is it possible to? I mean, that could have been the low bid, and it looks very suspicious to me. Uh, for example, uh, maybe they don't have a good reputation or whatever. I'm just thinking in general, can you reject the low bid if you think there's something suspicious behind it because it's so low, much lower than other bids? Yes, you can. If the, if the bidder doesn't meet the minimum qualifications in the bid spec, then you can reject the bid. Or maybe they have some kind of history we looked into. and <clears throat> Yeah, the bid spec should say that the township reserves the right to reject all bids for any reason or no reason at all. And you can reject bids based on specific problems that you have had or have have their references tell you about that they have performed uh, not sufficiently. And for example, do our, our bids require union uh, labor? I'll defer to that to the engineer. I don't know off the top of my head. I don't believe they do. Um, we require prevailing wage rates to be paid. Is that only when the project is a certain dollar amount or budget? Correct. There's yeah. um, $25,000 is right, right. the bid amount and $100,000 for roadway projects. Thank you. Yep. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, good. So where are we? Have a, we have a motion and a second. It's on the floor. We've had some discussion. Uh, any further comments from the board? Any from the public? Any from the virtual public? Okay, seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor of the, this proposal to reject the bids and rebid, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5 0. That's all I have under my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So, quick question for the uh, manager, uh, Mr. Chair. Sure. Okay. Uh, one of my favorite things to plan expiration dates. 
And it looks like we've uh, taken care of three, but the biggie that still sits out there is uh, Profco. And um, mm -hmm. are, are they are they really scheduled to be scheduled uh, for the 11th? On will they be coming? Are they going to be on the agenda? Yes, they will day? be on the agenda for May 11th. Okay. And, and what what will happen on that day? What are they coming to us for? The board will be uh, considering uh, preliminary slash final land development for the the proposed Wawa fueling station uh, on Lower Silver Lake Road. That's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Manager. That brings us, I believe, to minutes, bills, lists, and reports. And I'll turn thank it you. over to Mrs. Sn Ms. Schneider. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes for April 13th, 2022. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? Seeing none, uh, any from the public, which <laughs> which you don't have a copy to tell. So yes, uh, I'll go ahead and call a question. And all those in favor of accepting the minutes of April 13th, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries five to zero. Ms. Snyder. I would like to make a motion to uh, approve uh, Paying our bills in the amount of one hundred and ninety-five thousand three hundred and forty-seven dollars and sixty-seven cents. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Mack. I have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion from the board? Um, I would just like to uh, thank our manager for answering all my questions regarding the bills and uh, especially the question about this uh, lake view estates the uh, the lake which is a a basin by the Newtown dam and that we're responsible for clearing it of algae and and stuff like that so thank you yes I can always depend on an answer thank you Okay. Uh, so we have uh, the, the motion and a second for to pay our bills. Uh, do we have any further discussion? If seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor of paying our bills as moved, uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Thank you. Motion carries 4 1. And we've had an explanation of that no vote several oh, times yeah, now. I so, yes. Again, yes. <laughs> We're good. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Snyder. We have I, one more, don't we? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to approve our interfund transfers in the amount of two hundred and ninety-two thousand eight hundred and sixty-five dollars and zero cents. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. So we have motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion from the board? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor of the inter uh, approving the interfund tra transfers, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5 1. 5 0. Uh, all right, I'm looking at the hours here. So this brings us to our next round of public comment. Uh, and we um, just ask you to come forward and come forward and uh, state your name and where you're from. Hi, my name is Ann Longan. I'm from a new town and I uh, mm -hmm. want to talk about 5G. And we have Alexi and her husband and they are, she is a veterinarian and he is a MD. Okay. And, uh, she has some information on the problems with it as far as physically and her own experience. And then her husband has a couple comments on the overall um, problems. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Can you just state from where in Newtown you're from? What the I'm from. <coughs> no, no, the, the woman that was up before you. Mr. Longan. Yes. Ms. Longan. Where, where in Newtown are you, are you from? Are you just for I'm, the I'm in on, off of Highland. 
So it's Newtown, Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, an address. Do we need an address? Okay. We, I am Alexia we, McKnight. We, just one second. Do we typically ask for an a address? You you can ask for an address if you wish. Oh, you want an address? Yeah. We're, we're on Highland Drive. Okay. It's 407 Sawyer's Lane, Newtown, Pennsylvania. Okay. Thank you. Now, the floor is yours. Thank you. Yes. I am Alexia McKnight, and I'm from Chadsford, Pennsylvania. If I could have seven minutes of your time, I would really appreciate it. I've been a veterinary radiologist for 18 years, 19 years, to be honest, and well understand the effects of ionizing radiation. As a profession, we take radiation seriously and respect the damage it can do with excessive exposure. Before my plight that led me to understand the biological effects of non-ionizing radiation from wireless devices, neither I nor my profession were aware of the significant damage it can do. We are not trained in the effects of wireless radiation. Any of you that are remotely <coughs> contemplating allowing 5G small cell antennas in your township are clearly not aware either. Allow me to share what it's like. Imagine you've had a headache here and there throughout the years. Maybe you've tossed and turned in bed every now and again or held some aches and pains, had a bad mood, or forgot where your keys are. These things happen, you get through it. Now, imagine one day, all of a sudden, you get a bad headache all day, every day. You are completely unable to sleep, tossing and turning for eight hours straight, all night, every night. You're wired, yet exhausted, unable to relax. Your abdomen hurts, your joints and muscles ache, you're in a foul mood, irritable, agitated, snappy, and fatigued. This continues every single day. As time progresses, your memory fails, your cognition fails, it's no longer possible to concentrate. The ability to read is gone. Your heart stops beating normally as you've developed an arrhythmia. I know this all to be true because this is what happened to me. It was disabling. The progression from healthy adulthood to debilitation happened suddenly as soon as and as long as the electric utility placed a wireless device on the outside of my home. After the better part of a week of this and barely functioning, I left to sleep in the yard. The progression from uh, excuse me, this, this was December in, in 2015. The weather was cold enough to see my breath, but out there in a sleeping bag inside a little sailboat parked in the backyard, I could fall asleep and stay asleep. Though not an ideal solution, it worked. When the offending wireless device was finally removed, the symptoms I experienced inside my home resolved. Some weeks later, the arrhythmia returned, the headaches return, the insomnia return, the aches and pains return, the bad mood return, and unbeknownst to me, the wireless meter had returned. Upon removing it a second time, the symptoms in the house resolved yet again. The sudden onset of symptoms correlated exactly when the meter was on, and resolution of symptoms when the meter was removed both times. This was instrumental in determining cause. We've been tied up in the courts for several years since, trying to prevent a redeployment. I had three physicians testify to the harm that wireless smart meter caused me, and an ALJ judge that ruled replacing that smart meter back on the house would not be safe. Now, prior to all this, prior to the, de the deployment of that wireless device in my home, I lived a normal life. Now, I did used to get a pain in my ear every time I put a cell phone to my head and a nasty electric sting up my hand if I just touched a phone or a laptop or a computer, but I learned to live with that degree of electromagnetic illness. I used speakerphone instead. I stopped using the iPad. The headaches were mostly transient. Now, we can compare this to maybe getting some sniffles if you're allergic to pollen, which is in stark contrast to a full-blown asthma attack and unable to breathe. Similarly, after months of smart meter exposure, 
my electromagnetic illness progressed. I could no longer go to church. I could not visit most friends or family. I could not travel for work or pleasure. I could not attend my kids' school or athletic functions. I could not enjoy restaurants, concerts, public gatherings, family trips. I could not drive or ride in a new vehicle. If I did any of those activities, there was always some degree of suffering, and sometimes I'd be bedridden. My entire family, kids, and husband were, and still are, affected by this electromagnetic illness, much like Havana syndrome in our US ambassadors. However, in electrically clean environments, one with no wireless RF, no electric fields, no magnetic fields, and no high-frequency transients, I have no symptoms. The mechanisms of injury are not my goal here. They have been fully documented for decades and are readily available by investigating. This is how I realized I was not the only one who was debilitated by wireless radiation and other electromagnetic fields. Investigating, researching, and studying. Not ignoring, not denying. The electric utilities, the telecommunications industry, and the Pennsylvania PUC are no strangers to the onslaught of legal suits as a result of negative and unattended sequela to wireless technologies. I know this to be true, as my family has been, a, been one of many hundreds of legal cases brought forth to the PUC court, simply to seek the ability to live life and be safe in our own home. Industry's business model benefits from denying and ignoring the injuries. But governmental officials like yourself are better positioned to put forth higher moral fortitude to protect Pennsylvanians and yourself. In the same way that I have not experienced an asthma attack or an anaphylactic reaction to penicillin or pollen or peanuts, I recognize many other people do. I would never deny or ignore their condition. I would also certainly never willfully expose an asthmatic to smoke knowing they won't be able to breathe soon or give peanuts or penicillin to someone who tells me they get serious immune reactions. As you may not yet have experienced headaches, insomnia, pain, memory loss, cognition impairment, depression, other mood changes, and cardiac arrhythmias from wireless technologies, you can offer the same courtesy to me and a three to five percent growing to 40 percent of the population that does by allowing the rollout of safer technologies. There are other options to expanding the 5G network for high-speed internet, such as careful deployment of FTTP, fiber to the premise. Fiber optics are necessarily expanded to support the 5G towers anyway. Install the fiber right to the premise and adopt, purchase, install, and monitor policies to ensure all associated equipment, such as connectors, do not leak radio frequencies, cause poor power quality, or have strong fields. Adopt these policies with FTTP, and the problem is solved. Please do not vote to roll out small cell antennas throughout Newtown. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Any questions? Your, your statement, I was able to, <clears throat> I was able to find it, find it on the internet. So uh, if, if the rest of the board would want to, I can give you the, the link for it as well. So I mean, thank you for your comment. It's not, not on the agenda tonight to discuss, but I, I think moving forward, it's something we will definitely keep in mind and your, your testimony here is, is worthwhile. Thank, thank you. you. Hi, my name is Dr. Donna DeSanto Ott. I'm a physical therapist and the current president of Pennsylvanians for Safe Technology. And I'm going to keep my comments brief. What I had wanted to share with you, if it's possible to show it on the screens, is a video clip from the Pittsburgh, Pittsfield, Massachusetts Department of Health, um, the latest hearing. They recently filed a cease and desist with, um, against Verizon. And I think this is really important for you all to see. Can I? Hand this to someone? Is that possible? We're unable to play that over the video. I'm sorry? We're not able to play that over the video. Oh, you're not? No. Okay. All right, I can send the link. 
I wasn't able to pull it up on my laptop where I would at least allow you to, to hear what they had to say. But um, to summarize, what's on this video clip is what I saw when I did site visits and case management throughout most of, um, most of my work was done on the eastern side of the state, but we have victims all over the state. Uh, much of the same that uh, Dr. McKnight just reported. Um, it's really important to realize that this happens, and when it does, there's very little help for those who are harmed. And the people who are affected most severely are the people who have fewer resources. Um, in my own house, I was diagnosed early and was able to shield our house. It cost over $25,000, and most people don't have that. And when the lawmakers passed Act 50, you need to know that we were not allowed to submit public um, subject matter experts. And most of our team are doctoral level professionals. We have several um, college professors, researchers, um, who certainly could have provided valuable input to the legislators, but it was not allowed. And I think you need to know that. Um, We've since been working with attorneys trying to figure out what options there are because people such as Dr. McKnight, myself, here in Bucks County that I know of, you have at least three or four of the more severely involved victims. And one was the one I really spent a lot of time advocating for and it was heartbreaking. She lived in a tent for nine months. She slept in a tent during electrical storms. I. I can't even describe to you what it was like to listen to her, knowing that there was nothing I could do, that anywhere I went, there was no help. And you need to know that if you approve a permit for one of these antennas, that this is what you will be facing. And when you watch this video, this is exactly what we see over and over and over again. And now the other states that have more of the 5G antennas rolled out, we're starting to get reports of AFib, one of our physician consultants from Pittsburgh is going to be helping investigate that. So you need to know that this is what's out there. Um, in our work with the lawmakers in Harrisburg, this was a sample of what we submitted when we again were not allowed to testify. And you can see these if you're interested. These are the volumes of research that the FCC did not respond to last summer in the Environmental Health Trust case. I had submitted information on that last week. But four volumes of this were victim testimony and they had no response. The rest of it were abstracts, the paragraphs at the beginning of research papers. 10,000 pages, it was over 10,000 pages. Right. The examples of the harmed, um, as Dr. McKnight mentioned, there are many cases of um, people in Pennsylvania harmed by wireless utility meters. There are many others throughout the U.S. and abroad, especially in Australia and France. It's interesting to note that in Italy, where they hardwire their utility meters, we don't have these problems. Um, again, Idaho, um, the AFib cases, and the Pittsfield video, I definitely recommend that you watch. Um, it's only five minutes, and I ask that you not make a decision on an ordinance until you have a plan to protect public safety. And the one thing that no one talks about is that the purpose of the 1996 Telecommunications Act is to protect life and property. That's the purpose. And there are sections within that act that you can leverage that will help to protect public health, public safety. You can consider mitigating harm using those, using a solid ordinance, leveraging federal law to the extent that it's possible. Attorneys such as Andrew Campanelli, who is in the packet that I had sent, he's a very good example of that. Um, it's important to know too, within that packet that I sent, the, in, the insurance information, there's so much evidence of harm that insurance won't cover it. And you need to think, you know, where Who's going to cover the harm when it happens? Um, and we've been advised to think about and to recommend that you consider, are you ready to indemnify the harmed? You know, if you would pass one of these ordinances. 
Um, and I'd be happy to take any questions if you have any questions about anything that I sent. You, you mentioned sending a packet. To whom did you send the packet? To the supervisors? Or I noticed something on the um, agenda for the Planning Commission on May 3rd, is that? I'm sorry, you know, maybe you did not get that packet. Um, I will have to make sure that you do, because it may have been sent to the Planning Commission. But do you, are you aware of that meeting where this is going to actually be discussed um, by our Planning Commission? Because this is a matter of the Joint uh, Zoning Council put to all the Planning Commissions in our three municipalities. And um, although I'm, we've been advised that we cannot oppose this on health grounds, but you might want to look at attending some of those meetings where the planning commissions are going to be discussing this with engineers and so on. I don't know if you're aware of that. You know that, because I, I don't live here. I live about an hour and a half away. So it was a long drive okay. here. But I think knowing what I went through and what I saw, particularly in your county with the case of the woman in the tent, that was why I came. And again, you're talking about uh, also about these meters. You're talking about electric uh, mm -hmm. company. Yes, meters. it's the same type of it's radio frequency and microwave radiation. And uh, are they being installed in our area? They've already been, and that's why we've had these cases of harm. And not everyone gets so sick. So how would so I quickly. know if I had one of those installed in my house? You would look at the meter, and if there's a digital readout, then you have it. Okay. I didn't realize this. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. It's electric meters? They're um, wireless utility meters. Is it freestanding? It's the smart meters. Is it freestanding? AMI or advanced meter infrastructure. Oh, it is attached to our houses. Yes, exactly. Uh, like mm -hmm. You want to come forward and state your name? And so um, I'm uh, Dr. Lawrence McKnight, um, Lexi's uh, husband, and I don't have prepared comments, um, but I would like to uh, just one testify that um, you know I witnessed my wife's uh, decline. I don't have the same symptoms that she has, and as a physician um, coming in, it's it's very easy to discount. A lot of these uh, reports is you know maybe maybe uh, uh, just random chance occurrence, and all I can say is that that was my initial skeptical view uh, before all this happened. When you live with somebody that that suffers from this, you get a very very different perspective, and that caused me pause. And I think that's what I would maybe ask you to do is is take some pause. And consider this carefully because it, it really is an epidemic that is unrecognized and um, there is a tremendous amount of research behind this. This is not a fake um, you know, conspiracy theory kind of thing. There is really a lot of medical evidence. So I'll offer, there's, there's just way too much to go over from a medical perspective. I'm sure you have lots of questions. But I'll, I'll offer, you know, that if you have questions, um, I, I'd be happy to answer. Um, and in, in terms of the, the statement that was made, you know, we can't question this based on um, health effects. I think th there's an ethical obligation that you have to. Um, and part of the issue boils down to what do you do when there is uncertainty in the science. Because what you're going to hear from the uh, utility companies and from, uh, uh, from uh, uh, the telecom industry is that there's no evidence, quote. And what they mean by that is that there's no randomized blood control studies on this specific frequency or, or that um, um, you know, when they've done studies, they weren't able to find these symptoms. And that's a fallacy in the way that 
medical literature is interpreted. Just because you didn't study something doesn't mean it isn't real. And um, there's a very real thing that I can testify to because I witnessed it with my wife, but also when you go back and you look to see what the studies were done and, and how they were performed, there actually is a tremendous amount of evidence. But it is confusing and it is complicated because there are various different frequencies that are involved. Um, not everybody has the same um, effect uh, or uh, has uh, the same medical symptoms. And there are common pathways that overlap with um, with other medical illnesses. Uh, you may have heard of oxidative stress, for example. And oxidative stress um, uh, is a common pathway that this takes. There are also a tremendous amount of subtle details in the way that specifically 5G operates that invalidate where you would make common sense assumptions. For example, there's a thing called beam forming. And beam forming means that they take all the power of a you know, particular antenna and instead of radiating it out in a uh, spherical manner, they form a concentrated um, uh, distribution. What that means is that the, the power that the FCC specifications would measure would be averaged over say 30 minutes and they don't have the same kind of assumptions as the newer technologies where they're, they're literally, it's almost like laser beaming through uh, various different structures in order to get enough power to get to the device on the other side. So there's, there's a lot of tremendous uh, like complicated issues when you're trying to study this from a medical perspective. And so to the extent that this will be an ongoing issue. I don't think this is gonna go away. Um, it, your township really needs to be aware that there are health effects and to the extent that there are legal uh, uh, issues that can be prevented by your use of a lawyer that is familiar with, with the, um, the ways that you can avoid this for your citizens, I'd recommend that you t take that approach. And I, and I would I would say that we should get the, find the, find out who the packet of information was sent to, and then uh, bring ourselves up to speed. So we when we do make when we do have it come before us, we have uh, some additional information to consider, or you know, a lot of the additional information, I guess, to, to consider. Uh, so this is all new, kind of new information to me. So. Uh, Mr. Chair, I know this is public yes. comment, and I hate to yep. break protocol, but uh, may I ask the gentleman a couple questions? Sure. Is that okay? This is all fascinating to me, but I am a conspiracy theorist. Okay. And so my, my question to you is, knowing that the uh, cell phone companies are as huge as they are, uh, I, I've always had some sort of idea, and this is just me, that the next biggest companies are the cable companies. Now, being that they're fiber optic, is there anything damaging to the average everyday person from their cable box? And, and I'm, not, I'm not saying that they're spying on us or anything, but, but you're talking about a beam. And, and we all well, know that our cable box, there's that little red beam oh, that comes yeah. out. Is that anything I, that-, that I, I think that's through? a different Topic. I can okay. talk with you offline okay. uh, about okay. about uh, about that. Um, there, uh, in general, when you have cable coming in, um, it's it's better shielded, and certainly with fiber optics, it's a safer technology than going through the air. What we're talking about with 5G is they're just going like unprotected through the air, and the antennas are are designed so that they. Uh, you know, if you have a, a phone in your pocket or, or, or whatever, then in order to get this cell signal with these very high frequencies from the antenna to your device, they have to use super powerful waves. So in, instead, think of like a very sharp, high spike of a wave as opposed to a slow, continuous wave. 
the FCC measures over an average of 30 minutes. And that was back in the, in the 90s when they were, they were um, using continuous waves, you know, old-fashioned old radios. Now things work in a, um, uh, you have to be technical language here, but, but it, it's a bursting of, uh, of energy that goes out as a packet and in that packet, the energy is, is very concentrated all in a, in a very short period of time. And that seems to be one of the major aspects of, of why um, uh, it causes medical problems. There are also problems um, all up and down the, the frequency spectrum. So there's also an, an issue that happens, for example, with smart meters that is related to just the fact that it has a, what's called a switch mode power supply and that, um, that creates a, a, a transient on the wires of the house and that can also cause um, a, a radiation out from you know, the wires in the wall that, that seems to be causing a, a lot of problems too. So it's very, very complicated issues and I don't want to take up all your time. Yeah, uh, no, but, no. It's but just, if you have uh, other questions, I'm happy uh, to answer. Uh, I just have uh, one more in regards to, I think the, the doctor previous to you had, had mentioned something about she had to secure her house in some sort of way there, with there, panels. Am I correct? There are various different techniques that you can, that you can use. And, and for example, in our, in our house through, through Lexi, that we've, we've done all those things. And so one of the exciting well, things I, is, I, I don't mean is that, is that it, it actually can help. But, but, I mean, if we all have these boxes somewhere outside of our houses, yeah. is there a way to just secure the box for the time being? Is there a... Is it, there it's, some sort? What I'm suggesting is it's more than just simply the box, okay. right. right? So what, what they're proposing in, in these uh, regulations is that they'll install a tower at the utility on the utility pole, yeah. and that utility pole will get into your house regardless of whether or not there's a box in your house or not. Now, the box may also act as repeaters. That's another uh, uh, thing that, that can happen, and, and specifically with re respect to your... Uh, your cable boxes, some of them are doing that. They're basically acting as a repeater between houses. But that depends specifically on which, you know, cable, cable box you're using. Okay. okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So you know, if, if you have uh, further questions, I, I, uh, I'm available. Very good. Okay. Any, that brings us, any, any further public comment? I do see Mr. DeAprile coming up. Good evening. John DeAprile, New Tank Grant, biggest and the best. Uh, Mr. Chairman, rightfully so, you, you gave credit to our engineer for getting uh, the grant money for the trails. Um, it's a shame, though, that, that uh, you know, politicians have to get in on the act on social media and, uh, you know, Democrats, Slippery Steve uh, Sanisario, Do Nothing Steve, and Perry Warren both uh, took credit for getting this. When I know, and everybody know, everybody here knows, that our, our township officials are the ones that really push this thing. And if they didn't do a grant, no matter what they did up in Harrisburg, you know, it never would have happened. So uh, just like you didn't know that. No. Election day is coming up. They're running for election. That's probably why they get they put their name out there, and uh, you know they don't deserve uh, you know credit for that. Our township people do. Thank you. Um, also keeps on coming up. Uh, at least the last three meetings from now, uh, our our great uh, Castle Rock School Board, who uh, I really don't like. Uh, you know most of our tax money goes there. Has been brought up before and everything, but. You guys keep on saying about uh, 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 getting somebody of color in charge. Uh, the school board ran the guy out uh, to, you know, to dismay the taxpayers because we had to give him a buyout. Uh, they didn't like him. They wanted him out. They pushed him out. Uh, Susan, who took over, was second in command. She's the, uh, the interim uh, till I get somebody. And they ran her out because she's, uh, she took another job to get away from them. Uh, the politics in the Council Rock School District is terrible. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you could 
tell them, hey, wise up. Uh, it's not just the school board. It's the, the people behind them and other organizations out there that are uh, involved in, in Council Rock. Um, you know, it's not, it's just not right. Um, also, uh, you know, you got the YouTube one. Uh, luckily, nobody called in. <clears throat> Excuse me. I know there's some criteria for it, like, uh, just like coming to the podium, you have to uh, tell where you live and all that stuff. But there should be another, another piece of it in there. I said, why aren't they here? Why are they just calling in and didn't come to the meeting? Because same people come all the time, you know. If they want to talk, they should be here. They should give a criteria why. And not just, oh, I couldn't make the meeting. You know, why couldn't you make the meeting? You know, um, uh, Chick-fil-A came up again. My, one of my favorite subjects, Chick-fil-A. You know, they wanted to increase the kitchen size, which would have knocked down the, uh, the amount of uh, traffic. They would have got them out faster and everything, besides change the traffic pattern. But you guys shot it down, any business. And uh, another thing that came up was uh, uh, a little blurb about the New York water. I'd like to ask Johnny Mac, is that why he lost his hair because of New York water? Thank you. All right, any other public comment? <laughs> Seeing none, we'll <clears throat> go on to old business. I have one matter of old business just <laughs> Uh, uh, as an update, the fire services agreement was passed around to the board. Uh, our solicitor made a comment or two, uh, a couple of um, edits. Uh, and as far as I think we're concerned, if I get, have your consensus, uh, it's ready to go back to the borough for any, uh, you know, for them to look at our, our very minor changes. And then we'll be ready to next month. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, manager or solicitor, uh, that, that we will um, vote to write a resolution. And then at a few, the next meeting after that, we would vote to pass a resolution if we were so inclined. That, that's the way I understand it. The board will have to adopt a resolution to approve the intergovernmental agreement. Yes. So the intergovernmental agreement should be finalized before we entertain the resolution. Right. And the, um, as I understand it, the, the borough has a work session and we'll discuss in detail the, the, the agreement <coughs> next Tuesday or next Wednesday. Uh, and then we'll, we'll know where they are so we can write the resolution on the 11th, hopefully. Or make a, yeah, yes, authorized to write a resolution. So that's where we are. Uh, slow progress, but my time in government has taught me that things go very methodically. So that's all I have. Yes. Anyone else? Yes. So uh, I believe we're going to try to have a work session on May 16th, we Monday. Have had, we've had that discussion, yeah, I think. May 16th, uh, to begin the discussion of uh, spending some of the ARPA funds. Uh, uh, my intention it initially is to bring up some uh, additions for the supervisors as far as secure devices for township information, uh, new cameras, microphones for the public room to bring communication into this century, not this decade, because we're way out of the decade. We are actually out of the century. And uh, that way, we might even be able to play video like the nice lady wanted us to play in the future. Uh, so that's a public meeting on May 16th. That would be a work session. That's uh, the, may, the, the planned May workshop work, work, work session. Is that a Monday? Yeah. It is a Monday. Okay. Any other old business? Any new business? 
Any need for an executive session? I see the manager shaking his head no. Uh, therefore, I will, without objection, uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Yes. Thank you all. And with that, we adjourn the meeting. Don't call me.